hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. Did that. I'm getting a good start, got my Bible upside down. I'm happy to be here tonight to feel what I feel in my soul and in the church of the living God. Worship and praise brings the Spirit of God down. Anytime His people will worship and praise Him, He will come with a visitation upon their soul. And in, vis in visiting us that have received this wonderful experience with Him, He lets us loosen up and worship Him and praise Him that others may see. Are you listening? That others may see with their own eyes, that they may hear with their own ears that this is a true salvation. When you get to worshiping God, the Spirit gets to moving in every corner of the building. Every crack in the bricks, even the carpets on the floor, gets anointed to worship Him. And when the power of Jesus Christ is near, and goosebumps are running up and down our spines, and causes our feet to get loose, and anoints our tongue and our lips to speak. My God, it's time for the Holy Ghost to fall. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. You worship Him a while and let me kind of uh, anoint my throat with a little bit of this branch water, will you? Worship God a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Exodus, the 15th chapter. And I want to read to you the first verse. And then I want to go to the book of Revelation. Fifteen and three. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. They was not singing unto themselves. They were singing his praise to him. And they sang this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord. For he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider hath he thrown into the sea. Revelations 15 and 3. And they sing the songs of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thy king of saints. You may be seated. I want to speak to you for a while from a thought, a singing heart, or the song of all songs, or the most popular hit song that there ever has been, or ever will be. It's carried from the Red Sea over into the book of Revelations, which is the last book in the Bible. In other words, it's carried from the Red Sea to Revelations to eternity. You talking about a song that stayed on the top ten for numbers and numbers of years. It is a song of Moses. I know that we have had popular singers 
And maybe we've got some now. I don't know about that. But uh, some say we have. And some say we hadn't. But anyway, one of the top not songs of our time is still the song of Moses. It's still the song of all songs. And it's joined in by the Lamb himself with his song. And over there in the book of Revelations. My, won't we have a time when we get over there? You didn't hear me, I don't think. Won't we have a time when we get over yonder? Yes, we will. We'll have what we've been searching for all these years. I see lots of... Uh, gray-haired people in this place tonight to go along with mine. And we have been searching for a long, long time. And we have been striving to reach that ultimatum. We have been striving to reach that upper place. We are striving to reach that goal. I want to sing in that song with Moses and the Lamb. I want to be Right there somewhere. I don't want to be listening, but I want to be singing. I like singing. I like music. I try to keep a song in my heart at all times. I believe somewhere in the Bible it said the Lord give us songs in the night. And oh my, whenever you get that song in your heart, the song of the Holy Ghost. I want you to know that you can be happy. I said you can be happy. And you will be happy. Praise God. The song of songs. Or the singing heart. Moses had strived for a good long time. With the children of Israel to bring them out of Egypt. And he almost had to fight the children of Israel from the time they started out from Egypt. He constantly had to battle the evils of his time in the children of Israel, which are the chosen of God. Our troubles come from within. Our troubles in Pentecost church don't come from the outside. We're not persecuted anymore. And sometime I think it would be good for us if we were. Maybe it would bring us to our knees more in a prayer meeting. It seems like it's mighty hard to get anybody to pray. I said it seems like it's mighty hard to get anybody to pray. But I want you to know tonight that there's a song that's been in the land a long time. That song, an old song, beautiful song. And I suppose that that song will last until we're raptured out of this place. It's sung by, I suppose, every denomination in the world. I suppose, I don't know if they sing in synagogues or not, but anyway, it's old amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. A wonderful song, but it's going to stop at the graveside. It's going to stop at the grave, and we're going to be singing Moses' song and the Lamb. Let's don't forget the Lamb. The Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. The wonderful master of all masters. The king of glory. The king of of all kings, the king everlasting, and what is his name? Jesus. All right. Moses' song went something like this. You can read it in your Bible there in Exodus 15. The Lord is my strength. Who is your strength? Is Reagan your strength? Is Governor Romer your strength? The Lord is my strength. 
the King of glory. If you have the Holy Ghost tonight, if you have got the Spirit of God in your soul tonight, you belong to Him. He is your master. He is your king. He is your, uh, the anointed one that will come into a clean temple. All of our temples are not garnished and clean. There's many that are called, but few are chosen. There's many that's been filled with the Spirit of God. And somewhere they would run over a tack or a nail and they would be deflated. They will fall by the wayside and somewhere they'll be in misery most of the rest of their life. I'll ask you a question and I don't want you to answer only unto yourself. Have you ever grown cold in the Lord? Have you ever got to the place that you did not want to pray? Have you ever come to the place that you could not seem to touch our God? Have you ever come to the place that it seemed like you couldn't trust God anymore? Well, I want you to know that that King of glory that's indwelling in your soul is able to lift you up to the highest heights. He's able not only to strengthen you, but he's able to heal your body of all manner of diseases. I know we all get old, and some of us get contrary. Of course, I'm not talking to you folks. I get contrary sometimes, and I kind of get short when my wife ain't got no kids to get after but I find myself so desiring to stay close to the King of Glory that it won't be long before I'll get myself straightened out with her of my contrariness. Because I still have that inner thing that would cause me to repent of my sins. And church, let me tell you tonight, I don't care how righteous you seem to want to be tonight or how righteous you think you are. There's always room for repentance. Every day, every hour almost. Lord, forgive me. I have done wrong. And no better place can I find. Brother Gilray, I can't find a better place in the church nowhere to get a hold of God than praying somebody through in the old altars. There's so many people today that are afraid of the altars. They're afraid to come up front. They let the devil beat them out of the most blessed experience. Because you get in here, you work with the backslider or the repentant. Or the backslider or a sinner. Or even a saint that needs a closer walk with God. He will bless your soul. He will strengthen you. And he'll give you such strength that you'll be anointed to praise him. He'll give you such strength. I'm going to get that out of my face. Is that all right with everybody? He'll give you such strength that you can hold on to God and your feet will not slip. That you can hang, that you can just be like the hind's feet. That you can just stay on that mountainside. And you will not fall because he has given you strength in your feet and in your body. And he has given a determination in your mind and in your soul that you are going to stay close to him. And in staying close to our God, we help others to find God. He didn't save us to sit down. He saved us to worship him. He saved us to show our love for one another. He saved us to help somebody else find God. And it seems to me, as much as I had to cry out to pray through to the Holy Ghost, and how a little church at South Shreveport, we called it Summer Grove at that time, small church, but they stayed with me. 
They prayed with me. For three long months, I fought that battle, and I never was left alone in that altar. I'm so thankful tonight for the Holy Ghost. I'm so thankful for people that love a soul. So, our strength cometh from Him. But church, we have to apply ourselves, and I've already told you how to apply yourself. You probably already know you're being an older church and you've had some mighty good pastors. But it don't hurt to retell. It don't hurt to say it again. It don't hurt to preach it again. You probably heard this message on and on. But it never grows old to me. The message that God gives to his preachers, his ministry. I never grow old. So we read on down. The Lord is my strength and song and song and song. Everybody said song. That song. See, it seems to me like this day and time in our Pentecostal churches that people have lost the anointing to sing in the Spirit. Maybe I'm meddling. I don't know. But if I am, you forgive me. I won't be back for a while. I don't expect. But whenever we don't trust God and ask Him to help us sing, we lose the anointing on that song. For He... Let's see where I was. He is my strength and my song, and he becometh my salvation. There's nothing like singing on the inspiration of the Holy Ghost unless it be preaching under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I love to preach when the Lord comes, but when he's not near me, I struggle and I falter and I almost faint because I'm not a great speaker I've not got a, a great education but he has put something he's put a song in my heart and he called me to carry this gospel and I'm going to do the best I can and he's going to do the rest he will do the rest he never has left me to struggle long somewhere He'll give me the anointing of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. I may not jump, turn circles, and run the aisles. I ain't able to do that. I'm an old man. But the anointing is still there. I feel it tonight on this message. I feel it in your acceptance of this message tonight. The anointing of the great Holy Ghost that God is giving away so freely. He has become my salvation. Everybody said salvation. 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 This song that we are singing about tonight, or preaching about, is a song of victory. It's a song of victory. If you don't feel victorious tonight, you need to go back to the Red Sea. You need to go back to Jesus Christ. You need to go back to the foot of the old cross and shed some tears. Because the Lord on high, he expects the worship and the praise of his saints. He's become my salvation. My salvation is the redemption or redeeming power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Baptism in Jesus' name. Don't everybody have this experience? In fact, there's very few 
than have the experience that you and I have tonight. Yet, we could sell out this experience. God gave me a thought a long time ago, a vision upon my bed, and he showed me a crown. He let me dig up a crown in the church yard where I was pastoring. And this crown was so corroded and dirty that you couldn't tell what it was. So in my excitement, I commenced to clean in the dirt and the corrosion off of it. And every time that I would go over that crown, there would be more diamonds sparkling. There would more be more rubies with their wonderful ruby eyes, those red rubies. And there would be all kinds of stones, precious stones. And after I finally got it cleaned up, and our church was in need, financial need, and uh, I thought in my vision, well, we'll sell this crown. We would sell this crown because it is worth riches untold. But the crown was so expensive. Listen to me. The crown was so expensive. There was no money in the world that could buy it. There was not a man or a group of men that was rich enough to buy that crown. So I said to myself in my vision, I know what I'll do. I'll break the crown up and I'll sell it piece by piece. Piece by piece. The crown of life actually I'm talking about the crown that you shall wear, the crown that God has given you inheritance in with his power in your soul. But your soul can lose that power. Your soul can be broken up. Your soul, in other words, you can sell your soul. Esau sold out for what? A bowl of soup. He sold out, lost his birthright. We could do the same thing. And of course, I could go into a long message telling you how that we could sell out. One would be wholeness. We could sell out our wholeness. The devil is creeping into our churches. He's not making us like it, but nevertheless, he's coming in with women wearing their slacks and their pantsuits, shoving it down our throats, with men wearing their beards and their mustaches and their hair long. Selling out that great crown of life that's within their soul. The great Holy Ghost that you experienced that day, that you were so happy, that you were so free, that you could dance like a bird, that you could just float across the carpet on the floor if you had a carpet on the floor. Lots of us didn't have it. But that freedom and that peace. And they asked me to, my pastor asked me to say something that night after I'd prayed through. And I was standing back over against the wall. And I looked out over that little church. And I, I, I just broke down to thinking how that that little church, those few people that stayed in there and helped me find God. I know that there seems to not be a hunger in the land anymore. There don't seem to be a thirst for this grand truth anymore. And it seems like that if we're not careful, church, we'll be selling out the truth that we have. I'm glad of Brother Whitehead. Brother Whitehead is one of our uh, one of us older ministers. He's not near as old as I am. I'm not talking about that. He's had the Holy Ghost a long time. And he preaches holiness down the line. I've heard him preach it. And I can tell by looking out across this church tonight that you are obeying what your pastor 
is trying to teach you. That he's trying to get you to go to heaven with him. That he's trying to get you not to sell out that crown. Not that you ladies not to cut your hair. You men to get you a haircut once in a while. I look in the mirror every once in a while. I let it grow, you know. And whenever I begin to see it coming out right here, right here on this spot, I say, Mama, I got to go get a haircut. Well, you don't look like you need one. Let me trim it with a razor. No, I got to get a haircut. That's my warning. Go get it cut. Don't let it grow. Get it off of there. And I'm happy when I do. Speaking about songs, I heard a story one time about a church that the revival came through because they had been fasting and praying. They had been in the prayer rooms maybe hours. There's nothing hardly like a ladies' prayer meeting. And I was invited at Providence Hall to the ladies' prayer meeting. And I'm going one of these times. I believe it was one of our brethren down below us here somewhere. Uh, got a big church. But he told them ladies, he said, I want you all to pray me through. Took him four hours, they tell me, to get prayed through. We pray our little five-minute prayers. Lord bless me. And we think that's enough for one day. I'm as bad as you. Don't worry about it. Just pray. He's become my salvation. And he is my personal God. My God. My God. The one that saved me. The one that filled me. The one that thrilled me. The one that gave me peace. The one that brought me out of sin into this marvelous night. Woo! Hallelujah. My God, if I was as young as some of you folks, I'd be a shout. I feel that good. I really do. Thinking about this wonderful thing, experience, Call the Holy Ghost. Amen. And listen to this. We find this in the second verse, all of this. I'll never get through tonight. But I'll try to shorten it somewhere. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he hath become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare an habitation. Paul said it like this. What? Know you not that your, bi uh, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Habitation. He dwells in your soul. He dwells in my soul. He's my personal God. I talk to him personally. I ask him for my needs. I ask him to heal my body. I ask him to, you know, give me more faith. My faith grows weak sometimes. Sometimes I even kind of doubt God a little bit. And I say, where are you, God? He never has failed to come. And this God, this personal God that I'm talking about, brother... He's always on time. Every time. Every time. On time. He's never late. He's on time every time. That time is now. He's here now. He's not late. He's been here ever since the service started. This God... It is your personal God. 
You can talk to him just like you want to. When I first got the Holy Ghost, my oldest daughter already had the Holy Ghost. I think maybe she was around 14 or 15. And uh, she told me, she said, Daddy, she said, I want to talk to Brother Woolley. Brother John Woolley was our pastor at Summer Grove. And she said, I want you to go up there with me. I said, all right, honey, I will. And I went up there with her. And I listened because I wanted to know, you know, I wanted to hear. I wanted to know for my own personal self. And uh, she told him that she just really didn't seem like know how to pray. Is anybody here tonight that don't know how to pray? Strong question. But I remember Brother Woolley telling her. She said, he said, honey, he said, you just talk to God just like he was one of your friends. You just think that he's sitting right there beside you because he's our, he is. And you talk to him just like you would a friend because he is your friend. He stuck us closer than a brother. Oh, I kind of reared back, man. That done me good. I didn't know how to pray. I knew how to repent. But I didn't have no polished prayer, you know, all fixed up. I got one whenever I sit down to eat. It turned out the same way most every time. Y'all can laugh, but I guarantee you I'd like to get you out sometime. <laughs> but it done me good. And it taught me something that I kept in my heart, in my soul, in my mind, that He is my personal God. I can talk to Him just like I want to. I can tell Him all my problems. And when my spirit gets so weak, my trials are so heavy, tears begin to flood my eyes in self-pity. Looks like I'm going to be overthrown in spite of all that I can do. But pray. Then I remember what I heard. That he's a friend that won't let you down. And I go to him and I just fall like a baby because I realize that you know that I needed him. I needed to repent of some of my thoughts. Just let him put his great big arms around me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just let him put his arms around me and maybe take his great big hand and kind of brush my brow and tell me everything's going to be all right, son. I'm going to be with you all the way. <laughs> Woo! Even to the end of the world. <laughs> Your personal God I'm talking about. Your personal God, little brother. Glory, hallelujah. You see, I can't do this without God. I can't sing without God. I can't pray without God. I can't live without God. I must have Him. I must be near. When my feet stumbles and I get weary, people say, I've heard them get up and testify, I found no place to turn back. <laughs> I wonder about that, Brother Gilry. You know, we get weary. Our Brother Gilry here, old faithful warrior that he is. I know probably, Brother Gilry, in your trials, troubles with your voice, it just seemed like 
you know, that you were just bound so low you didn't see hardly, you know, how you could make it. There he is. Worshiping and praising God. His voice is better. I hope he gets to preaching again. Pastor in the church with his wonderful wife back there, Sister Gilray. So good to see you. My. In church, you may not think you're nothing much. You may not think that you can do anything. But what God has made, He will not cast it aside. What He has given you to do, He will anoint you to do it. He won't give you anything you cannot do. He'll make you able to perform that which He has given you. We're living in a time today in our churches where the gifts don't seem to operate much anymore through the saints body are you listening God gives the gifts to those that want it Bad enough to pray for it. Somebody said one time, you know, I don't believe that I got the Holy Ghost. I spoke in tongues a time or two, but I don't believe I got it. Whenever I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I spoke maybe three or four words in tongues. The church had been so diligent that they just wanted me to claim the Holy Ghost, I thought. So, I said, yeah, I got it. By faith. Yeah, I got it. But immediately, I started praying God confirm that Holy Ghost with tongues. Let me hear myself speak in tongues freely. Years, he called me to preach his word. I hadn't spoken tongues yet. Still, God, confirm the Holy Ghost in me. Well, he had already confirmed it. He wouldn't have called me to preach. I didn't have sense enough to know it. But I wanted to hear myself speak in tongues. That is the evidence that Jesus Christ has come in to a soul. Four years this went on, and I was at the camp meeting one day, standing on the left side facing the pulpit, and they were singing, and I stood up and I was worshiping God, and all at once, he gave me the utterance. He never has failed me, children. He never has let me down. When I was sick unto death, it seemed like to me, it seemed like I just could not make it. Open heart surgery, weakness, heart failure, fluid on my lungs and around my heart. And I'd sit there in that chair and I'd moan. Didn't look like that I could make it. Jesus was not through with me. He's still not through with me. I did not bring the Holy Ghost with me tonight. But my God, how I do feel it in this place. It's through your worship and your praise. It seems as I look around tonight, 
And I just won't look at anybody because I'd be afraid you'd think I was talking about you. But it looks like that you haven't touched God in so long you wouldn't know how it felt. Your face is blank. There's no spirit. There's no smile. There's no raising of the hands. There's no clapping of the hands. The end of the end time. When scarcely the elect itself can be saved. In the most dangerous time in our Christian life. Most dangerous time in our walk with God. They tell me the worst accidents happen within a mile of home. Sometimes we look down our long rusty noses at people when they fall by the wayside. And we give them a hard time. We give them a hard name. Some of our preachers that have done wrong and been disfellowshipped out of our organization or sin in their life. And they're criticized because they're still trying to get back to God. I just can't see it that way. I just can't see it that way. God came to save that which was lost. And if there was ever anybody that's lost, it's a backslid Pentecostal preacher. Lost without God. If God will take him back, who am I to judge him? Who are you to judge one another? Ooh. What a mighty God we serve, children. I'm using children as a pet word. It's not to make you feel small, but it's a loving word, a pet word. Jesus loves you. Amen. You backslider, I don't know who you are. I can't pick you out from here tonight, but you're here. I feel it. I come to tell you tonight that God told Israel, or in his word, he said that God was married to the backslider. There never was a time in a walk of Israel that if they didn't repent of their sins, if they repented of their sins, God came back and blessed them. If he will do that in that day, he'll do it nowadays because Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Everybody say it with me. Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He'll not let you down. But my Bible tells me that pride goeth before destruction. Pride goeth before destruction. I don't think that's a quote. Pride's going to send more Pentecostal pre people to hell than anything I know of. Stiff necked! Not me. You won't see me running in my house. You won't see me shouting my hair down and the hairpins falling all over the floor. My pride won't let me act like that. Somewhere I read where it said, Leave with joy. I don't know how long I've been preaching. Too long? 
Everybody ready to go home? What time is it? But I want him to press up on your heart and your mind that if you're cold in God, if you're out of the circle of his spirit, tonight is the night. Today is the day of salvation. Tonight is the night that you can get your freedom and liberty one more time. One more time, God, here I come. One more time, God. Thrill me. Chill me. One more time. Oh, Samson, he stood with his arms wrapped around those pillars of that arena. And he said, Lord, hear me just this one more time. Just help me one more time. I'm asking you tonight to let God help you one more time. I'm asking you to come and repent one more time and get that smile and joy on your countenance and that song in your heart. The song of all songs. You never know what a song will mean. Sung in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I heard a story a long time ago where this church was in revival when I prayed and fasting. I started that a while ago. Never did tell it, I don't think. But anyway, they was having a great move of the Spirit. And uh, after church, they all started home and got home. The Lord impressed upon this sister of the church to stay outside a moment or a few moments. And she did. She leaned up against the post of the apartment building that she was living in. And God told her to sing. The Bible speaks of songs in the night. She began to sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. So sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Not knowing why that God had told her to sing. Little did she know in the building, the apartment building next to theirs, there sat a man on the edge of his bed with a loaded 38 in his hand. And was about to take his own life. His miseries had piled up on him. Nothing would go right. He was tried till he couldn't stand it anymore. He was going to end it all. But this lady was singing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God told her to do it. And because she was singing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost... God pricked that man's heart. He laid his gun aside. He came out to the singer. And he said, you know, he gave her the testimony that was about to happen to him. He asked her the question, where do you go to church? She told him, of course, that she had the Holy Ghost. She was going to a certain Pentecostal church in that city. He said, I would love to go. It seemed like that you have such peace. It seemed like that you have such a great spirit. It seemed like that you have got such a good uh, attitude. I want to go. Is there anybody else down at that church that acts like you do? Oh, yes, there's lots. So he went, and God gloriously filled that man with the Holy Ghost because this lady would allow God to move in her life. And allow him to anoint her with his spirit that she could sing along out there in the night. And that man was saved. No telling how many more saw his life and was saved later on because of his experience. 
Yes, I said a while ago, sometime we think that we're nothing. But my Lord, how mercy, saints, you are somebody. Yes, hallelujah. I said that you are somebody. I said that you are somebody. I said that you are somebody. You don't have to hang your head. There are those that are lost. It always breaks my heart when I come to this part of the service. Tears come to my eyes. I just can't help it. Think of the multitudes that are lost. And there's some that's sitting on the sound of my voice tonight that you're going to go to hell. Church, would you think about that? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's somebody sitting here tonight that's going to go to hell. That's right. Ain't Unless oh, they repent of their sins and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and baptize in His name. I got lost in the woods a long time ago at night. Somebody told, I heard, if you'd find an old road and stay with it, it'd bring you out somewhere, and that's the truth. But it brought me out eight miles from home, and I didn't know where I was at. All night long, cold, raining, lost. I sit on a stump out there in them lonesome woods. I'd yell. Woo! Of course, I could yell louder than that then. Won't somebody hear me? But all I could hear was the old lonesome hoo out. Woo, woo, woo. Lost. My Lord, what an eerie feeling. What a lonesome feeling. my center friend and the backslider and you lukewarm saints God is talking to hearts in this place church you need to pray church you really you really need to pray could we stand I see your need. God sees you. He's looking down on you. Would you make your way to the altar and let him thrill you and chill you one more time? Just one more time. Just one more time. Is there anybody that feels like they need a closer walk with God? If you need a closer walk with God, why don't you lead the way? Why don't you lead the way? Never, never, never.
Thank you for letting the Lord speak through you to us. Hallelujah. I feel the love of God here. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Isn't there a sweet presence? Oh, peace. hallelujah. My, what a privileged people we are to know Jesus Christ and to be in his house. Hallelujah. Don't you just love him? Hallelujah. You can make it, you can make it on this. Yes, this amen. Makes it easy. We appreciate brother and sister of Whitehead. We miss them tonight. We appreciate that good message that was delivered this morning. Food to our souls. Wasn't that good? Hallelujah. I'm glad sister Whitehead's here. Hallelujah. Let the Lord have his way with you. When you go, go with God. Amen. Take him with you. That's right. Just, just let God have his way. Yes. And uh, let God work. He'll do things. He has wonderful things for us. Amen. That's right. Day by day. Just watch for it. Look for it. Be ready for it. Accept it. Live with it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we bow our heads together? Dear God, we thank you for this service. Thank you that you have visited with us. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.